Hey everybody, Dr. Vong here. I'm gonna talk about the current 2021 monetary system and the Federal Reserve, the banking system, everything like that. It's really, really crazy. So in the description, I will put a link to a 20 minute video that I highly encourage you to, wa uh, to watch. It breaks down our current uh, monetary system in a very surprising way, you know, and it's just really simple to understand. But what I'm gonna do is um, explain what's happening in our current financial system uh, that will really um, uh, explain that uh, video really, really well. So let's get started. Unless you've been kind of living under a rock, you know, our US government. Oh, by the way, what I'm gonna talk about today, it's global. Like, I'm gonna talk about the US Federal Reserve banking system, but there's Every country uses the same system. There's a UK Federal Reserve, there's a uh, Australian Federal Reserve, Canadian Federal Reserve, it's the same French Federal Reserve. Um, it's the same system everywhere. Okay, so um, here in the United States, we've been arguing about some stimulus packages, some, de some deals, you know, Biden's trying to pass his major reformation uh, plan, build back better, etc. Now recently, as in last week, they just passed, this weekend, they just passed um, a uh, infrastructure bill that's $1.2 trillion, trillion with a T. And um, I wanna give you some insights into that and explain how that works, okay? So, now I'm just gonna say the US, here's our current monetary system. So here's the US Treasury. Right, I can't really draw really well anymore. <laughs> but let's call that the US Treasury. There's probably another dome there. Okay. And um, these will be banks. All right. And here's the Federal Reserve Bank, FRB. Okay. So Federal Reserve Currently, the chairman of the Federal Reserve is Jerome Powell. You've heard of him. Um, the U.S. Treasury Secretary is Janet Yellen. Um, so this is Yellen and this is Powell, Jerome Powell. I think it's two L's. Okay, so here's the first thing you need to know about the Federal Reserve Bank. First of all, the Federal Reserve Bank is not federal. <laughs> it's not federal. It's not a branch of the government. It has stockholders. It's a corporation. It's privately held. It's not a part of the government. There is no reserve. This is not Fort Knox. See, when I was a younger person, I thought the Federal Reserve had a big cash, like stash of cash somewhere. Comment if you understand what I'm trying to say. Like you thought when you think when they say Federal Reserve Bank that they've got gold bars, they've got coins. Like if we were pirates, we would want to go like break into the Federal Reserve. It's like Fort Knox. You know Fort Knox is like empty, right? Like there's nothing in Fort Knox. So the Federal Reserve Bank actually is not a reserve. There is no money there. And lastly, it's not even a fucking bank. You can't go open an account. I can't go open an account. You can't go, you don't make a deposit. Like they don't, it's not a bank. So everything about the FRB is a total lie. That's the truth. You can look it up on their own websites. And I'm gonna explain how this whole system works using this $1.2 trillion, $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. And as a disclaimer, I will tell you, I'm not political. I don't care, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Libertarian, I'm not a Republican. I'm just a cool, badass dude who just lives my life trying to be happy and, and love them on my little baby girls. That's all I want, right? So, and I'm gonna tell you, this happens, it doesn't matter who's in power. It doesn't matter if it's all red, some red, some blue, the president's blue, the president's red. it doesn't matter who controls Congress, the Senate, blue does not matter. It's the same thing every time, all right? 
So what's going to happen, you've heard in the news that um, they just passed this $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, which sounds amazeballs, right? Like, yeah, we need new bridges. <laughs> you know, yeah, we, we cross all these bridges that are like structurally unsound, like they, they, they're going to collapse anytime. Roads, highways, um, you know, it also includes like internet to, to rural areas, um, some other kind of pork stuff in there, but you get the idea. It sounds good. Infrastructure. We need infrastructure to stay relevant in the next century, right? So yes, it passed. Now, initially it was like, I don't know, 2 trillion. They worked it in a 1.5 and, and they worked it out of 1.2. Now in my private group where I teach this all the time, I told people, I was like, they're going to pass it. It doesn't matter. Biden's bill that was initially three trillion, the Build Back Better, that's now currently one point eight trillion. They will pass it at some form or another. They have to pass it, and I'll explain why today. So now this bill has passed, which means it's gonna it's law, right? And they don't have any money. So the first thing you need to know is the U.S. Treasury. <laughs> U.S. Treasury sounds like Treasury, right? Like. They cannot make money, cannot print money, quote unquote, print money. All right, watch this. Comment if your whole life, <laughs> when you saw videos of uh, that money going down like the conveyor belts and getting turned over and cut and stacked and sorted, like you thought that was the U.S. Treasury. I thought that was the U.S. government printing money. It's not. The U.S. Treasury cannot print money. It's against the Constitution. That's crazy. Okay, so Yellen is the Treasury Secretary. She cannot print money. But what will happen is now, now that they have, uh, they passed this $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, now the government says, okay, Treasury, uh, get us some money. So what the Treasury will do is issue bonds, which is basically an IOU, right? They're going to issue $1.2 trillion worth of U.S. bonds. And this is an IOU plus interest. And you know, the interest rates uh, vary. It could be 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%. And back in the day, U.S. bonds were considered some of the best, most stable investments because the U.S. always pays back its debts, right, for the history. So if you got a bond with 5% interest, that was a very safe way to protect your money. So as you got older, your financial advisors would take you out of stocks and put you into U.S. treasuries or U.S. bonds. Okay, and that's an IU plus interest. Remember, there's plus interest. So I'm going to represent it. I need another color. But let's say the IOU is blue. And the interest, just to keep this consistent, interest is green. So now you've got $2. All right. Now the banks will go and buy. So the banks will buy these bonds. So who are buying these bonds? I mean, there's some small time investors, but forget the small time investors, it's the big banks, the big institutions. Some of them are other countries. People don't realize this, like other countries will buy US bonds because it's a good way to like build their treasure chest. And then the banks will then take the bonds to the Federal Reserve and sell the bonds uh, plus profit to the Federal Reserve Bank. <laughs> uh, so the Federal Reserve Bank will buy, so they buy bonds at a profit for the banks. So in other words, the Federal Reserve Bank gives money to the banks who then go take that money and they buy more bonds and it sells it back to the Federal Reserve Bank who then gives money to the banks and the cycle repeats. So 
if you're paying attention, the Federal Reserve Bank is basically a middleman. But, remember, it's not federal, there is no reserve, they have no money, and they're not a bank. But Dr. V, if that's true, where do they get the money? This is U.S. law. This is all, this is how this works in every country. The Federal Reserve Bank has been given the authority to literally go back into the back office and tick, 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 type in on their ledger how many zeros it's 1.2 trillion so let's write that out it's 1 trillion 200 billion <laughs> did i do that right that just looks too big is that right no i think that's too big I don't even know. No, that's right. That's crazy, right? Because this would be, uh, yeah, this would be a billion, 200 billion. Look at all those fucking zeros. It's mind boggling, okay? They literally just go back in their computer and tick it, tick it, tick it, type and just change, uh, change it and it goes right into the bank's accounts. There is no printing money. There's nothing. Now, for those of you who are just watching this, I want you to pay attention to this. This part's really important. If I have a million dollars and I give you one dollar per second, I am giving you a dollar a second or I'm spending a dollar a second, a dollar a second. If I had one million dollars, that would take me about three years roughly three years to, to get rid of my million, to spend all my million if I spend a dollar a second. If I had one billion dollars and I gave you a dollar a second, that would take me about 36 years. 36 years to spend a billion dollars at a dollar a second. I'm 49. So most of my life. My girlfriend's only 29, <laughs> so she's about to turn 30. So it's long, it would take her her whole lifetime. All right, so if you had a trillion dollars, because a trillion is 1,000 billions, it would take you, you guessed it, who can do the math, 36,000 years, guys. 36,000 years to spend a trillion dollars. This number is so huge. And we are printing money like it's nothing. Oh, Dr. Vogg, that's what you get for voting in the Democrats and, and Biden and Biden's rooting. Dude, Trump printed more last year. 40% of all the money in the United States, 40, 40% of all of the US money ever created has been created in the last 18 months. <laughs> what? We are just, like, this is ridiculous. Put a wow in the comment section if this was startled. Like, you know that a billion and a trillion is three zeros, but to see 36,000 years is like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> okay, so what's a bond? It's basically an IOU. It's a debt that says, I will pay you back in the future with interest. In the future. Why is this important? My daughter took my red marker. Hold on. You know, sometimes you just got to have a red marker. <laughs> Here we go. Found the red marker. So this is payback. Ergo, this is the future. So every time the government passes a bill, call it stimulus, <laughs> call it, you know, make America great again, call it make America better, back better, build back better. I don't fucking know. It's the future. So what you're doing is robbing 
future generations of prosperity. Give me a oh S H I T. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because why? How do you pay back these bonds? How does the U.S. Treasury, what is the only way the U.S. Treasury gets money? Who knows the answer to this? What is the only way the U.S. Treasury gets money to pay back these bonds? Only way, only. It's taxes. So you're gonna be taxed. Whether it's your lifetime or your baby or grandbaby or my, my grandbabies, no, it's taxes. Only way U.S. Treasury makes money is taxes because they cannot print money. They can only tax the people. And the Federal Reserve, before I forget, was started in 1913. And then 1913 is the same year that the income tax came into being. Did you know that? Because that's the only way the system works. So we are robbing future prosperity. It's fine, but the money better fucking go to bridges. It, the money better get to the internet, to Wi-Fi, to the social programs they promise. I mean, I'm not naive. I'm sure some of it's going into pockets <laughs> somewhere. Some of these zeros <laughs> get lost in here, I guarantee you. Okay, so... The banks are going to go buy this $1.2 trillion worth of bonds that they just passed. They're going to take it to the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, back to this. Dr. V, prove to me what you're saying is true. You can go look up uh, Jerome Powell. They do weekly reports. Okay. Since 2008, they ch <sighs> these fuckers, man. They change the terms. All right, so 2008... They call it what? QE. Quantitative easing. Quantitative easing. At first they started with stimulus. That was the Obama $800 billion stimulus to rescue the banks, the car dealerships. Who remembers that? 2008? And everybody was like, $800 billion? You're fucking out of your mind. And now we, we did, like, Trump did $4 trillion last year. Biden did two trillion so far. He's gonna have another three or four trillion going. You can look, at, I'm not anti-Trump, you know. I don't really have an opinion. I don't really care. So they call this stimulus and then they call it quantitative easing. This is quantitative easing. And right now, they're calling it, um, uh, you might hear it as buybacks, you know. It, it makes it sound like they're trying to help us. They're buying back. They're, what would they say they're doing buybacks is they're buying back these bonds. They're buying the bonds. But all it does is it's the same thing as dumping money. This, all, these are all the same thing as dumping money into the economy. It's all the same thing. We have not stopped quantitative easing. Uh, since 2008. We've never recovered from 2008. That's a different topic. Okay. Who wants to know? Who knows how much the Federal Reserve is constantly, is currently, not constantly, is currently spending on these buyback programs? Who knows the number? I'll wait. <laughs> you can look this shit up. I am not, I am not lying to you. But roughly, I'm running out of rooms, for the last 18 months, so when the pandemic started, 18 months, the Federal Reserve has been spending approximately $120 billion one time, Dr. V. <laughs> Good Lord, Dr. V, say one time. $120 billion dollars. Per month. Per month! They've been dumping $120 billion into the economy out of thin air per month. 
Are you kidding me? What is happening to your dollar? Why, why is gasoline four or five dollars? It's because of Biden. No, it's not. You know, look at your grocery bills. They've doubled. Oh, inflation is only 5.4%. The fuck it is? No, it's not. Great. That's crazy. So they've been quantitative easing for $120 billion per month. Now, why am I telling you this? Because the last week, last time they met, this is a week ago, Jerome Powell says, we're going to start backing off. We're going to start easing off on the buyback, starting around mid-2022. Maybe by the end of 2023, it'll be over. Really? They're going to quit dumping money into the, stimulating the economy. What's going to happen to interest rates? What's going to happen to inflation? All right. First of all, by definition, <laughs> by definition, the definition of inflation is more currency in the system. They've been dumping $120 billion per month into the system, and they're looking at you and saying, no, th th this is a cause inflation. That's the definition of inflation. There's more money and limited supply, so people bid up the cost of the supply of the goods. That is the definition of inflation. Money comes in to the system. And these fuckers look at you and say, oh, no, no, no. We know, we know that printing money does not cause inflation. Like, dude, dude, don't pee on my back and tell me it's raining. All right? Like, dude. And then Jerome Powell, six months later, goes, well, you know, it's temporary inflation. Comment if you've heard them say this throughout the last year. Oh, no, no. It's just temporary inflation. And now their new favorite word, it's transitory inflation. They went from no inflation to temporary inflation to transitory inflation. It all ends up with, it all says inflation. I don't know why you, why you want you to sit there and say, you know, we're big kids. We can take this. Just say like, uh, we're going to fuck up your savings. You know, you know, Dr. V, I've worked hard all my life. My 401k is up to $500,000. That will buy you an apple. <laughs> once, once all this shit is said, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. The only thing that matters is how much your dollar will buy. And $100 will not buy a basket full of groceries like it used to when I was a little kid. Can I have an amen here? Have you noticed that? You leave the grocery store for 100 bucks and you got two little bags now. Like nothing. All right, so that's what they're talking about. So who thinks, who thinks that Jerome Powell is being honest when he says, we're gonna start scaling back buy these buybacks and they just passed $1.2 trillion and they still have to pass the $1.85 trillion, you know, build back better and they're still dealing with all the stuff that Trump passed last year. Yeah, that hasn't even fucking rolled out. And who really thinks that they'll be able to stop buying back? If they, if they stop buying back, this grinds to a halt. The banks have no place to sell it. Okay. So, back to this. I said I was being nice. And I said, well, the Federal Reserve is a middleman because they're the ones who just create the money out of thin air and keep this thing going. But if you understand that they have no money, what would happen to you and I if we wrote a check to an account that had no money in it? That's called what? A bounce check. You bounce enough checks, you'll go to prison. That's against the law. But the Federal Reserve Bank, which is not federal, it's not a reserve, it's not a bank. Every time the banks, they buy these bonds back, these IOUs from these banks, they are making, they are printing money out of thin air. So this, these are, this is, I'm going to be nice, con men, illegal, and my favorite word, a Ponzi scheme. I mean, what else is it? You cannot stop. 
can I have an aha? Have y'all heard, uh, you know, Powell say, oh, we're going to slow down. And now you're like, oh, shit. They cannot slow down. They can't. It's not possible. Right? So, the question about who's the Federal Reserve? Answer is we don't really know. It's all mired in secrecy. But most people think it's the banks. The people who control the banks is the Federal Reserve Bank, Federal Reserve Board. These are the stockholders. And not only are they making money when they sell here, they're making money here because they get paid 6% interest. It's crazy. All right, now, so remember, um, the Treasury is selling bonds, the banks buy these bonds. So in other words, the banks will give the money, uh, the banks will give the money $1.2 trillion into the U.S. Treasury now. So now what has to happen? I'm out of room. <laughs> Dr. V needs a bigger board. So now the U.S. Treasury government now spent, takes this money and spends it on the projects. They hire contractors, right? They hire employees, services. So this is who pay, this is how they pay for Medicare, Medicaid, the government agencies, veterans affairs, highways, infrastructure, interstates, you know, uh, services like, um, you know, child welfare. And yes, my favorite one, war. <laughs> I don't need to laugh about war. War is horrible. But if you understand that they have to spend the money and nothing like war, you know. Hey, I'm a product of the Vietnam War, okay? So I'm a Vietnamese immigrant. I get to, I get to talk shit about that. You know, not political, just the way it is. I'm just telling you. So, this all involves us. So some of these, oh, but those are government employees, Dr. V. No, no, the private sector. They give money to the private sector. They have private sector. They have grants, right? Um, if you work in a university, you write for grants, small business loans. The money that they sold has to make its way into the economy. So here's the last thing I want to talk about. So you and I, so this is us, <laughs> not the United States, but us folks, we work and they tax. I'm a surgeon, I work, they take, my, they take money. You're a waitress, they, take, they tax you. You are a school teacher, they tax you. You're an accountant, they tax you. You're an artist and you sell a painting, you gotta pay tax. You're a small business owner, you own a little coffee shop, you gotta pay tax. They tax you to go back and repeat this freaking problem. Now, here's the last thing I wanna say about this, why this is important. We work. Most people, when you work, doctors included, you are exchanging Hours for dollars. My shift is nine to five, and you're gonna pay me $20 an hour, $15 an hour at Amazon, right? So eight, eight times $20 an hour, $160 plus benefits. You are trading your time for dollars. But here's the thing that I wanna impress upon you. It's not just your time. Your time is important, yes? Amen? Write this down. You are also trading your talents. T-A-L-E-N-T-S. Your talents. If you're a singer, you're paying uh, taxes on your record sales, on concert tickets. Your talents. If you are an artist, you're paying taxes on your artwork. If you design t-shirts, graphic artists. If you're a teacher, and you have a special connection with kids, 
and kindergartners, and you were voted Teacher of the Year, and your students love you. Your talents! That's a talent. I was a surgeon. I was meticulous. I had great eye-hand coordination. Those are my talents. I could process my anatomy. I could remember things I had studied and learned and seen before. My talents. I could wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning to my beeper, go in and operate on people. My talents. You are trading your talents, y'all. You have to understand this. But Dr. V, I'm just a waitress. Have you had good service before? Have you had bad service before? Comment if you've ever had a bad waitress or waiter. On the other hand, have you had an amazing waiter or waitress? And you're like, oh, wow. See, that's a talent to be able to... Have you ever had a waiter? I remember when I started doing this when I was younger. And they, would, they wouldn't write down your order. They would just memorize your order. And they re remember who ordered what. And even if you changed it, that's a talent. Gift of gab. Doctor, you know, have you ever had a waiter just like talk the perfect amount? Not too much, not too little. Have you ever had a waiter remember you? I have a couple of valets who uh, we go to restaurants and there's a couple of valets and I will pull up and they don't give me a ticket. I'm like, where's my ticket? Like, oh, I got you. They remember me. That's a talent. You know, he is trading his talent for my $20 tip. <laughs> that he'll have to pay taxes on, but probably not since it will be cash. <laughs> you get the idea. So it's not just your time. It's just your talents. And lastly, it's not just your talent. You know, I have a 15 year old daughter who wants to go into act, you know, acting. She's a singer and an actress. It's the future talents of all your kids and your grandbabies, and all their time. And because they keep pumping money into the system, you know, Dr. Vaughn, that's our system. Listen, they are not going to be able to buy a house. When the meeting starting across the United States, the average starting, starting the median cost of a, of a house is $350,000 now. You can't pay for that. Dude, check this shit out. I've been telling this in my private group, like they are conditioning us to accept $50,000 is the new starting price for a car. When I was, I remember $20,000 was like, whoa, 40,000 was like a Lexus when I was growing up. And like a, like a, like a decent car was 10 to $12,000 when I was growing up. Dude, a, a lot like a eight year old car now is $25,000. And they're, it's a chip supply shortage, Dr. V, whatever. Okay, it's a supply chain issue, Dr. V, whatever. They're getting us used to this. I remember when a $100,000 car was fucking ridiculous. You're like, $100,000? Like, I could buy a house for that. Why would I buy a $100,000 Mercedes or anything? And then, you know, Ferraris were like $250,000. No, nah, you got million dollar Ferraris. They're conditioning us. I remember when a pickup truck was twenty thousand. That was a lot of money, and then it was like thirty thousand. I was like, "Why would I pay thirty thousand dollars for a new pickup truck?" A starting pickup truck is fifty thousand dollars, and now a fucking like a Ford Rain, Ford F one fifty is like a hundred thousand dollars. I saw a Toyota Land Cruiser yesterday for a hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. It was twenty twenty one. It was used. It had ten thousand miles on it, and they wanted a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. They are conditioning us. So the future for our kids is that they're not going to be able to buy anything. It's, inflation is crazy. Now, I'm not saying we don't need this infrastructure deal. We do. Do we need 1.2 trillion? 36,000 fucking years? Think about that. You know, you have to get smarter about money. You have to understand how the system works. You've got to take the politics out of it because it does, again, it does not matter who controls the White House. It doesn't matter who's in Congress. I'm telling you, both sides are guilty of this. This is the way the system is set up. If they ever stopped it, the whole thing would collapse and we'd go into a massive, massive depression that would make the 29 crash look like baby play. And people don't realize this. The Great Depression lasted for like 10 years. It lasted a long, like 20, no, 15 years, something like that. 
So if this system, if our current 2021 system crashes, we are talking about a 25 year recovery cycle, 25 years, an entire generation of the, you know, like my 15 year old daughter will know, will not have anything for 25 years if it crashes. So they, that's why they have to keep printing this up, coming this, you know, doing this up. I tell people in my private group, I said, I guarantee you 110% they will raise the debt ceiling. What did they do? They raised it temporarily to December. They're kicking the can down the road. December is going to come. They're going to raise it again. I promise you. And every year, every administration, they're going to print $1.2 trillion. I mean, they're going to print more, right? So Biden's going to print this $1.8 trillion. And what's going to happen, here's my prediction. I promise you this is my prediction. The markets will tank soon, right? The economy will tank a little bit, not massive, enough to kind of sting you. Like what happened last March when the pandemic started. Markets will tank a little bit, a little bit. And then what will happen is 2022 is an election year. This happened to Trump. It happened to Obama. It happened to, it happens to everybody. And then in the midterm cycles, the people will be unhappy because the market's tanks and they're, and we're still stretching out this pandemic, yada, yada, yada. They're going to, uh, the, the control of this Congress will flip just like it did for Trump back in, uh, you know, 18 right? 2018. So it'll happen to Biden in 2022. And then they're going to, and then they won't be able to pass anything. They won't be able to pass anything, right? Because the people will be upset and that will slow it down. And then that will give us time to recover a little bit doing all this effing bullshit, right? That's the prediction. And then 20, who knows what will happen in 2024. It's crazy time in politics, but it, the politics don't matter because it does not change the cycle. It does not change us at all. And this is only part of it. I didn't even talk about the fractional reserve lending by banks, etc. But that's enough. I mean, this stuff right here will just like drive you crazy. If this video has been helpful, I hope you will please hit the subscribe button, share the video, and um, yeah, I can talk about a lot of shit, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> it's so funny because it makes me sound like I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I'm not. This is really reality of how our monetary system works. Okay? Love you very much. See you next time.